If you've not previously heard of the British Constitution Group, then this short video will give you a brief outline of who we are and what is our purpose. If you agree with the general gist of what we are saying, then we invite you to visit our website for a more detailed explanation of what our concerns are and why we think the work that we are doing is as important to you as it is for us, but equally important to your family, friends and work colleagues without exception. Established in 2009, our group has a rapidly growing membership scattered throughout the United Kingdom and beyond. We are ordinary people from all walks of life in a myriad of backgrounds. We are doctors, dentists, solicitors, policemen and women, builders, painters, decorators, and a large number of us are either current or past members of the armed forces. All of us share the same ambition, which is to reassert our constitution and to take back control of our country. From experience, I know that some of you will, will ask the question, what is our constitution? Whilst others will want to know, from whom do we take back control? The question, what is our constitution, invites a long and complex explanation delving into the politics, the history and the law of our country and is beyond the scope of this short introduction. For now, I think the priority is to explain why the British Constitution Group is so absorbed with our constitution when the political establishment clearly pays it no heed whatsoever. I should make it clear we are not a political party. Our objective is to educate and inform about the way we are being unlawfully governed. Our modus operandi is to research and collate and disseminate facts to help expose the political hogwash that emanates from the collective political establishment, aided and vetted, of course, by a totally controlled and compliant media. I have said that this introduction will be brief, so let me focus on just two essential questions which under consideration should give you the impetus to want to know more. Question 1. Who really governs us and what constraints are placed upon them to govern according to the rule of law? And question 2. Who really controls our economy and thus our financial well-being? The answer to both questions should be that we are governed and our economy is controlled by a democratically elected government subject to the constraints imposed by our constitution. But sadly, this is not the case. Our democratically elected government no longer govern us because they have surrendered their lawmaking authority. And the control of our economy passed into the hands of the international banking cartel some time ago. And they certainly no longer recognize the lawful constraints of our constitution. 99% of the population of this country, in fact, do not even know what our constitution is. And incredibly, that includes the majority of politicians, judges and police. Or at least, if, they, if the latter three do know what our constitution is, then they are simply not paying it enough attention. Now, you might be inclined to shrug your shoulders and say, so what? I have a nice car, a nice house and a well-paid job. And it doesn't matter to you that the politicians are filling their expenses and no ignoring our constitution. But that, of course, presupposes that what does not matter to you today will not matter to you tomorrow. Take for example the proposed carbon tax. You might think that this is of no interest to you because it only applies to large corporations. Well you're in for a shock because what is being planned is that not only will you be taxed on your wages but you're also going to be taxed on the size of your car, the size of your home and the number of holidays you take each year. In fact every luxury is going to be carbon rated and taxed and the luxuries that you took for granted today are going to be squeezed, not once, not twice, but continuously, until the only option that you will have will be to get a smaller car or a smaller home or take fewer holidays, or pay more carbon tax, all based on the provably bogus claim that carbon dioxide is destroying the planet, which is not only untrue, but patently ridiculous, but more on that elsewhere. But your, big, your biggest shot will come when you realise that it won't be our government implementing these new carbon taxes or the EU. Carbon emissions are, after all, all being hyped as an international problem. And so goes the argument, must be therefore dealt with by an international tax, coming straight to your door, courtesy of the United Nations. And whilst to most people the United Nations is an organisation working for the good of mankind, those who have studied it in any detail soon realize that there's something decidedly not right about the power of this organization that it both has and is trying to establish. 
No responsible government should ever make its citizens subject to a tax imposed by an unelected international body, and yet that is exactly what is being proposed. If you've not yet heard of the expression post-democratic, then we recommend that you retune your antenna and listen more carefully to the language of the emerging global elite. Our own politicians have ignored our constitution because it got in their way. And on the international stage, they are prepared to ignore democratic safeguards because in a similar fashion, democracy is also getting in the way. Codex Alimentarius, which imposes rules about the food we eat and the medicines we take, and Agenda 21, which covers a wide range of subjects as to how we must live our lives, are both already being imposed upon us. And yet these rules do not emanate from the government that we have elected. These rules, in fact, have been instigated by an unelected body meeting in secret behind closed doors at international forums. They are then imposed upon our government by way of international treaties, with our government then imposing them upon us. We are in essence being taken over by an emerging new world authority that uses a sleight of hand of international treaties to impose their undemocratic authority upon us. First we had the undem undemocratic institutions of the EU and now we have the even less democratic institutions of the UN telling us how we should live our lives. Meanwhile, as our democracy is being destroyed, our politicians remain silent. We should also note that the United Nations is heavily influenced by the many international corporations that lobby its members, which poses the question, are the rules coming from this body really for our benefit, or do they in fact benefit the corporations? I have my views on these issues, but I will let you work this one out for yourselves. So let's summarize. We have an unelected international body, heavily influenced by international corporations, making rules and regulations about how we must live our lives, being imposed upon us without our consent, all courtesy of a greedy and corrupt political establishment that likes to line its own pockets. Let's be honest, our government is not working for us. Our government is working for an international global elite and they are being paid to do so. And that is what is at the heart of all our problems. Our country is not being governed for our benefit, it is being governed at our expense. So there it is, Codex Alimentarius, Agenda 21 and unconstitutional carbon tax, all courtesy of an unelected international body whose members are almost certainly in the pay of international corporations. If you are still not concerned about the demise of our constitution, then you really should be. The British Constitution Group is concerned that our constitution is being flouted and ignored by our politicians, our courts and by the police authorities. This means our rights are being taken away from us in tiny stages so that we hardly notice. What we are witnessing is the emergence of a global world authority that is imposing its authority by stealth. The good news is that people are starting to realize what's going on. The mere fact that you have watched this video means that you have at least taken the first step to waking up to the reality of your future, which has the potential to be undemocratic and oppressive or democratic and free. Having made the first step, please now make the second. We would like you to join the British Constitution Group and help us to reassert our constitution and to reimpose the rule of law on the political establishment, the courts and the police authorities. And by so doing, help us to prevent an arbitrary and undemocratic authority being imposed upon us without our consent. I hope by watching this video you've been convinced that your constitution is worth defending and in fact that it is essential that we do so. And I hope that you will join us in what we regard as the most important battle to defend our rights and our freedoms for more than half a century. Thank you for watching.